Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Serial Gaming here, and let's talk about another episode of the City of Final Fantasy Opera Omnia, where we'll be looking at the upcoming banner, which is Fang featuring Beatrix LD Return in the final boss rush, I think, that we will be getting. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's the final one, but we haven't been getting any boss rush after this one, so I'm pretty sure they replaced boss rush with a six man, six warrior quest, but that is not confirmed as well, so. I'm just gonna say that it might be the last one so if you're a fan of bots uh, boss rush um i guess sucks to be you but anyway let's get started there first with the kit so starting thing off we'll be getting uh beatrix with sadly no rework on her base skill her skill one her skill two and her ld which is quite surprising really she doesn't have a lot of hp dumps on those attacks so i was hoping that actually make an upgrade on her base skill but uh, it seems that they just upgrade her EX with the Crystal Level 90 instead. Her EX Plus, which is uh, available when you have 9 or above amount of uh, buff in your entire party, it will be dealing 4 AoE split HP attack, and if you have 15 or more buff in your entire party, she will gain access with her EX Plus Plus, which deals a 5 AoE split HP attack. So other than that, uh, like I said, not too much of an upgrade, but it does improve her Holy Knight Safeguard attack, which is her HP attack that is uh, available after using her EX. It now deals two single target HP attack and heals the entire party. It extends her own buff for one turn and apply that Holy Knight Safeguard buff, which allows uh, a mitigation of, of any HP attack from the enemy. It now applies the buff for two turns, but really it's only one turn to be exact because after using the skill, she'll gain an instant uh, turn as well. So the skill itself is an instant free turn skill. And after using it, it will be reverted back to its uh, normal HP attack. Her additional ability with the Crystal Level 90 also has been extended to 7 turn buff. It provides 30% uh, party attack up and a 20% brave damage limit up. It also heals the entire party based on 30% of Beatrix max, uh, I mean the uh, individual's max HP. So Beatrix right now, um, I would say that the best part about the upgrade is actually her HP attack because previously it was quite clunky to actually sacrifice a turn from Beatrix to use that particular skill but right now it's just easier to use it to mitigate the HP attack from the enemy itself. So Beatrix uh, is still a very good dispeller with some pseudo protection with that Holy Knight safeguard she also is a great battery unit that batteries both on turn and off turn with her follow-up attack. And her attack, um, if you recall, ignores defense, so it can be used in situations where the uh, enemies have very high defense. She can just ignore that one, a little bit like Auron in that sense. However, she's a very, very slow unit. For those who never used Beatrix before, that might come as a good thing in some sort of way because she's a off turn damage dealer. She can also deal damage on turn. Her slow speed also works really well with that uh, HP attack, the HP attack mitigation skill since it's really easier to time the enemy's attack with, with Beatrix getting less turn in. However, her attack is really bad right now with the minimal upgrade. Her EX now deals good damage but that's the only uh, hit attack that has more than 2 HP attack and the only skill that has, more, uh, has 2 HP attack is her LD. Her follow-up, her skill 1 and her skill 2 all only has one single HP dumps, which is really sad. The recast gauge for her EX is also charged really slow, so considering the fact that she don't have a lot of damage in her base skill and her only best skill is her EX, which also, like I mentioned, charged really slow, and she has slow speed, all this into consideration means that she is more reliant on off-turn damage as a counter unit instead. If only they actually buff her follow up attack to at least 2 HP attack or at least deal better splash to down target. She was really good when she get her LD board but I guess that uh, they make minimal changes to her kit because of that. And her EX upgrade I would say it's mediocre at best because she's not a bad unit to begin with. So I guess that even with minimal upgrade she still can be good in the party itself. Pairing wise, since I mentioned that Beatrix is very bad with her on turn damage, you will want to use her with uh, off turn unit. 
so that you can just use a lot more counters like Oren, like Kor, or even like Kane with that often damage as well. She offers very good protection to unit as well, so units like Vivi that has a very minimal protection from his own skill. And since Beatrix actually has a lot of heals in her kit, this actually can work really well together with uh, Vivi who constantly reduces his own HP and the party HP to actually do damage. Naturally, when it comes to off-turn counters, you don't want to pair them with units that delays the enemy too much. And Beatrix actually offers defense uh, buff, which is not really too good in this era, but otherwise you still don't want that buff to be uh, wasted if you're running with units like Delayers or Turn Hoggers, you don't want to run Beatrix in that sense. Otherwise, you're just using her as a dispeller, because if the enemy is not getting any turns, Beatrix is not going to perform really well in that particular stages. Anyway, moving on forward, we have Fang with a new LD. Fang also get a lot of rework in her skill naturally since she hasn't been get, being relevant for quite a while. I think she was relevant back in the Chaos release or is it Cosmos? But anyway, Fang skill 1 now does a 2 single target HP attack with a 50% splash. She applies a stronger debuff right now, but other than that, it's not really uh, too much changes in that sense. Her skill 2 now does a 3 single target HP attack, a launch the enemy and batteries the entire party. In similar with her Crystal Level 90 upgrade, her EX Plus, which is uh, available when she has 5 stacks of her Fang of Transgression buff, which is not really hard to build up the stack since, since she has 2 stacks at quest start and increase when using her skill 1 and skill 2. So basically you're gonna be access to her EX plus pretty easily. So it's a 3 single target HP attack with 50% splash and it also initiate launch and buries the entire ally so they can deal more damage in the launch itself. Her additional ability which was really good previously, it's now even better. The buff has been extended to 4 turns and it provides a 20% party attack up, 20% HP damage up and 20% party brave damage limit up. So Fang's new LD does a 4 AoE split HP attack and it applies the same debuff as her skill 1 which is 50% uh, defense down, 20% speed down and a 50% max bravery down. But the best part about her LD is she gained access to her LD buff which is for 9 turns. It provides a 20% self HP damage up, a 20% self overflow up, a 50% self brave damage up when targeting debuff enemies. And it provides another additional 3 turns buff when she initiate a launch, which now provides her a 40% self attack up and a 20% self HP damage up. So another further 20% there provides up to 40% self HP damage up. And the best part about the LD buff is that she applies a new debuff called Days which lasted for 3 turns every time she inflict a debuff with her action. This day's debuff actually provides a very huge 40% brave damage up and a 40% HP damage up, and it paralyzes the target. So it sounds really really good since it's very easily applied, Fang can just apply it every time she inflict a debuff, but the problem is it actually works similarly with uh, Selfie's and uh, Edward's LD fashion. So what I mean is, every time the enemy is hit by an ally, it will reduce the debuff by one turn. So in that situation, you want to constantly apply the debuff if Fang is in the party so that their debuff will be more relevant. So if you understand how to play Fang from where I'm going here, Fang only, Fang only applies debuff on her skill 1 and her LD. So to make sure she can also apply this day's debuff on when using her skill 2 and her EX which is the stronger attack and the launch attack as well. So to make sure that they can, she can actually apply the debuff, you must put a debuff spear on her so that she can inflict the debuff every time she takes an action. So what I mean by debuff spear is actually debuff inflicting spear which is particularly uh, popular in E spear itself. So, so some of the spears idea that you can make it more relevant for Fang is Spears such as Laguna, Vincent, Cam, Ultimisia, Realm, Fran, Setza, Kurosame, and Tidus all have debuff inflicting in their spears uh, itself. However though, do make sure that if you want to uh, apply those debuff inflicting spear, there is no stronger variation of that said debuff. 
present, otherwise you won't be able to apply that debuff and hence you won't be able to apply Fang debuff, I mean Fang's LD debuff as well. For example, if you're running Cam Spear on her, which inflict attack down debuff, you want to make sure that you do not run her with unit that can apply attacks down debuff, which because they have a stronger variation of it. So I'm looking at Tom Barry troops and a lot of people actually recommending putting Laguna Spear on her. And I would say that if you want to use that spear, only make sure that if you're using her as a call unit instead of having her in the main party. This is because Laguna Spear is actually the only spear that applies an AoE debuff to the entire enemy. So by putting Laguna Spear on Fang herself, she will be able to apply an AoE debuff using when using her skill 2 and her EX so that she can apply that uh, day's debuff to the enemies. However, the problem with this is if you're running Fang in the party itself, Lagunas apply a Max Bravery down debuff, which has which Fang has a similar debuff with her skill 1 and her LD, and naturally Fang's uh, debuff application is a lot stronger than Laguna. Laguna only applies a 30% Max Bravery down with his original spear, not the refined one, and Fang's kit already applied a 50% Max Bravery down, so Unless the enemy's 6 turn max bravery now uh, debuff is running out, you won't be able to apply uh, the day's debuff with Laguna Spear in that situation. So if you're running Fang just as a call, then yes, you might want to put Laguna's E Spear there, but otherwise, you want to go for another option for a single target constantly applied day's debuff. So I'm using Cam's as a very good example since Cam's apply a attack down debuff and uh, Fang doesn't have any single attack down debuff in her, her kit so that actually makes it more relevant for her if you're running her in the party itself instead of being used just as a call unit. So what I think about Fang is she's a very good crowd control unit if you're running her in the party. Her paralysis for a single target is actually very easily applied. Uh, even for an AoE, you can just use her skill 1 to apply AoE paralysis for a clutch moment. And I think the only unit that surpassed her in the upcoming future is Cam's BT or BT Plus if you may. But otherwise, Fang might be the only unit that can constantly apply her paralysis easily. She works as well in calls, but for, uh, for what I mentioned before, because calls you want to only use her with Laguna Spear. And one thing about using her as a call is that remember that that paralysis goes down constantly every turn when the enemy takes damage. So you either want to use that call to maximize your BT phase or if you want for a clutch paralysis like uh, Edward's sleep, which if I'm being honest, not too entirely reliable when you have uh, calls such as Shantoro that exists as well. But Fang does apply paralysis in both of her call if you gave her Laguna Spear, so you might take that into consideration. She has launches in her kit too, but sadly she has no delays or any form of turn manipulation. I think she's the only launcher that doesn't have any turn manipulation in that sense, which kind of sucks really because uh, she can't maximize her launch without having a uh, additional turn manipulation unit in the party itself, which kind of sucks really. But she also has a very poor damage in this era considering that she has zero bravery gain between her HP dumps. So that her HP dumps is really can only be maximized if you have bravery ceiling with units such as Ram or Ursula that provides such function. So for pairing ideas with what I already mentioned, probably use unit like Ursula or Ram to maximize her damage itself. Or if you want to pair her with the layers such as Cypher to maximize her launch damage, that could work too, or even turn manipulators as well. I don't exactly recommend pairing her with turn hoggers since they'll drop her debuff so fast and you probably won't realize that you're out of a clutch situation and you might be danger for if you have the enemy takes a turn after your turn hogging. So I won't say that they're too compatible in that situation. Since Fang is a crowd control unit, she doesn't mind the enemy taking turns. They're not going to do anything anyway with their uh, with her debuff on. So I wouldn't say that turn hoggers is actually the best compatible with uh, Fang in that idea. Also, like I mentioned before, don't pair her with any unit that can apply a stronger debuff than the spear that you gave her. That is really counterproductive for Fang to constantly apply her debuff. So take that into consideration, of course.
Alright guys, I think that's it. I might be a little bit rusty on the explanation today. But anyway, Fang, it's a very nice unit to play with. But otherwise, I won't be seeing myself using her a lot since I have her in JP. And really, I don't use her at all in this era. By the time I think I want to use her, I already have Cam. So for me, I guess I might skip or otherwise just throw some tickets to test my luck. But I really want Beatrix in my alternate account since I want to complete the off turn idea for my alternate account but otherwise I won't be chasing too hard on this banner. I'm actually honestly very surprised that many people want to go for this banner and some even says that this banner is actually the best banner comparing with the banner we have got released this few weeks. In my opinion, I think that Titus and Ram and Cypher all actually surpassed this banner, but um, to each of his own, I guess. So, alright, thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys tomorrow in our last boss rush for now. Yep, so cheers guys.